Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy. Four nerds by nerds. Hang out with these nerds. Nate the Nerdark. Nerdark is dead. And D&D, to stream or not to stream? That is the question. Jump down the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. All right, so the other day, um, you know, we were talking with staff editor Doug and we were talking about streamed, uh, stream games and online games and and you know he brought up a really interesting point that the combat is probably like the the least interesting part of the game especially if you're kind of running it like you might run it at your table you know every table is different so you you know your mileage may vary for instance if you're kind of just get into that routine of I attack with my sword, I do four points of damage, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's not going to be exciting to watch at all. Uh -huh. But it could be, like, that. that's okay. It's not wrong. It could still be fun to play that way at your table. Plenty of people do, and, and, and they enjoy that. But if you're watching someone stream, and, you're, and you get, and that's the back and forth, that's going to that's gonna be far less interesting. Yeah, fighting with a great sword, rolling savage attacker great weapon fighter and you're just like oh and you get three attacks that's wonderful <laughs> <laughs> yeah because it's going to be more of the same the same so you know really like i guess what we're talking about here is the fact that when when you're streaming a game for people to watch you're going to want to be like oh you know i lay into him you know with a savage attack for you know eight points of damage you know as a, you know as i do this uppercut slash with my great sword or you know you know i'm gonna you know come in spinning you know luke skywalker style you know you, you got to use some descriptiveness some some narration now last week we just had our first session of our saver dice game uh -huh. and we had a combat in the sewers and we were fighting some goblins and some half orcs and some hobgoblins right so you know my character fights unarmed and, you know, basically the scenario was there's this wide ledge around the cistern in the sewer, right? So my character would just like, you know, like he started off the combat. He doesn't carry any weapons, but he does have cooking utensils. So, you know, he draws a skillet, you know, because at first I was thinking I wasn't actually going to be able to reach them. So I was just going to wing a skillet at somebody. <laughs> but, you know, like, so I would make the tag, you know, have the tactic of picking people up and trying to throw them in the sewer. And, you know, but I would try and role play during the combats and have banter with the enemies and 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 you know yell at them and maybe do a little bit of a PSA about why being in a gang is bad um, <laughs> you know but things to keep it interesting but you know there's also like this fine line of doing that and being you know and not being a spotlight hog and trying to like you know share you know share the spotlight with everyone else and and hopefully maybe even like do that banter and role playing with the other players at the same time but doing all that in a way that also doesn't slow down the combat. Mm. So, like, it can be something like while you're actually rolling your dice, that's when you could banter when you interpret what the results are based off of what's already happened or one, once the DM actually tells you whether you were successful or not, that's where you could be descriptive as to what you're actually trying to do. Uh, and, and, you know, real point of advice is... While you're rolling, you know, while that's all figuring out, that's your window. Then when it's somebody else's turn, you, you mute your mic or, you know, you just shut up, whatever you, whatever you want to do. That gives everybody else the chance to then follow suit or not. But I like, I like that kind of like uh, RP sandwich. You've got the RP of what's going on. You're figuring out the, the, the dice and everything like that. And then you've got right after describing what happened based on what the DM says if you succeeded or failed or gives you some kind of other caveat about something. Yeah, and so the thing is, too, like, these are actually starting to become important conversations because many people are now playing online. Like, even if you're not, you know, maybe you're not streaming games like Saver Dice or Nerdarchy, you know, or Maze Arcana or Critical Role, but, you know, because it's so much easier to find games online, you have more people to, to get involved with, uh, it just, you know, it just makes sense that now we have to have these conversations and start thinking about how can we increase the experience and have a better experience at, at, at our gaming table, whether it's a physical table like we play in your basement or it's a virtual table like we use online. Because, you know, you also have things like there's several uh, uh, tabletop, virtual tabletops out there uh, like Fantasy Grounds and some other ones as well. So, so we have to keep this in mind, you know, when we play in Ted's house, we use minis, you know, we use the pre-painted plastic minis. You know, when we use Fantasy Grounds, we're using, you know, the tokens. 
and you know if you you know if you wind up gaming on just like a Google Hangouts, then there's not really any option for any kind of interactive environment. So it's just completely theater of the mind. Which when I game online, that's typically what I have access to or what I've what I've done. You know, I haven't done the other the other online resources. Yeah, I, so far I've used Fantasy Grounds and some of the other ones as well. But, you know, then co with that comes like a learning curve as, as well. Whereas, you know, when your Google Hangouts is a lot easier. Now as a DM, you can do some interesting things with that to, to make things maybe a little bit more cinematic. Like you can you could do a screen share and pull up maps and pictures and things like that as and, well. And I've seen that, that kind of stuff done. But unless you're... Unless you're battlefield managing with some kind of other tool or application where the players are moving around, then you've got another aspect of, okay, well, when you're moving, where are you going? And then you're going to have to, like, micromanage every single person or figure in the battle as opposed to just the bad guys. Right, and this becomes one of the challenges of playing streamed games or online games as opposed to playing in person. So Theater of the Mind definitely represents a, a challenge because to me it represents uh, the, the, the story that I have in the back of my head from way back in, in our gaming history when there was a battle with four ogres, I was playing a wizard, there was a wall of fighters in front of me, and yet somehow the ogre came and attacked me. I'm like, you went through those guys in a dungeon to smack me, and because we were playing theater of the mind style, there was no, you know, there was no way for me to thwart the DM. Not you though. No, it was still, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. you said you, and I'm like, well, we want to let everybody know it wasn't Dave. <laughs> no, no, this was this was Steve at the time. But back in the day, I might have did it. I don't know. <laughs> it's 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 possible. But I think that's what actually prompted us to you know do the little battle mats with the D4s and the D6s. And yeah, yeah. We actually bought a piece of you know clear plastic and drew a grid on it. And, you know, and then we went to the D6s and D4s, like you said. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so the other thing about Theater of the Mind, like, to keep in mind, if you're running it as a DM and avoid those kind of situations and other situations, I just try and favor inside of the, on side of the players as the GM. Yeah. Uh, you know, how many guys can I hit? Well, there's five of them. I'll go three. You know, like, mm. unless it's obvious that they would be able to hit them all or, or obvious, like, you can only hit one. But for the most part, I just go, oh, okay, well, let me err on the side of caution and just give it to the players, you know, because I think it's going to make a better experience for them. I don't want to argue with them over, you know, you know minutia during yeah. the game. Like, I can always just add more enemies if I really needed to. At, at any time you get in those those uh, those situations... You, you have to ask yourself what 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 does it ha what happens when I say no like is it worth the argument is it worth worth the discussion it's going to slow down the game much more so than just allowing it and as Dave says you know you always have the ability to be like well here's wave number two <laughs> yeah reinforcements show up that I that I definitely had planned <laughs> one of one of my best <laughs> combats actually was done in waves. Yeah, so so there's there's always that. Like if you're gaming online using Theater of Mind, like I would always err on the side of the players as the GM just because it speeds up the game. And really, at the end of the day, you just have to ask yourself, you know, it will the game lose something because I said yes? Like I like there's this weird thing where GMs feel like they have to like challenge the players by X amount, right? Mm -hmm. And and you know and and when you're in Theater of the Mind, I think like that kind of comes forward a little bit instead of just going eh, you know it, it doesn't really matter let them feel good about getting an easy win every once in a while big deal and i can make the next fight harder yeah and you can always make the next you can make the fight seem harder in their mind but not necessarily on on paper because like you know with good description and basically making your players think that they're fearing for their character's life in some way i think makes it challenging in their head even if they actually do win and, and it wasn't too big of a deal. They're like, wow, I don't know how we made it, but it was like a way easier combat than I thought it was going to be. And that's just simply just setting the expectation of, of the combat in the player's mind. And I found for Theater of the Mind that I run into the problem where it's kind of a disappointment. They're like, oh, I thought I could do that or I thought I could make it to here in time. And I'm like, well, technically you're like 15 feet off, but I'm like, well, maybe based on my description, did he think he was close enough? Or, and so I'm trying to like backtrack in my mind did I mess up and say the wrong distance? 
when everybody could just check the paper and be like, oh, it's 60 feet, it's 60 feet, everybody knows that, where either I or they could misremember or stuff like that for that. And that is kind of like one of the easier things about having a grid, whether it's virtual or real, is you can you can just eyeball and go, oh, yeah, I can do that, or you can count up the squares or whatever, but theater of mind, you don't get that. And that, you know, that is one of the challenges, and that's a challenge whether you're playing online and streaming the game, or you're playing, you know, at your home table, a home game at a table. One of the things I've noticed is going from tabletop to live streaming uh, is that you have this issue where everybody talking at once at a table, you can kind of figure out what's going on. Or it sounds like an interesting argument, like when people are trying to talk over each other. But when you're live streaming or you're recording something, it just has this cacophony effect. Like you just don't know what's going on. The mic is picking up everybody's voice but it's just kind of mashed together is what i think it so, becomes noise yeah yeah so when you're live streaming uh and then you also have that strangeness where you the mic the the like maybe the google hangout doesn't know who to look at <laughs> well that really depends on what platform you're using as well That's because because there are different ways of doing it where you can get the nice oh everyone's in their own box at the yeah, same I, time i like that a lot better because that makes when i've seen arguments and discussions it's a lot easier to see what's going on and you see everybody's facial expressions if you you know you can focus on who you want to look at and it's pretty quick right well we, when you had that so that this this is like a platform issue like how you're going to do it right but like if you're using zoom or skype or something like that and then you have to use another piece of software and then you can do that and then everyone can kind of talk at the same time and it becomes more organic more like a, a regular conversation as opposed to like if you're using a google hangout where uh, where, you know, only one person can be shown and talking at the same time until, cause Google Hangout is like trying to figure out who it should be focusing on. Mm -hmm. So, so really ultimately what that really comes back to is knowing the platform you're using online. Right. Or even if you're, even if you were doing like a live game the way we do, because we're using like one mic then, you know, you get the same effect as the Google Hangout, right? Where it just becomes noise or you're only getting pieces of it because it's all getting recorded at once. But whereas, like, if you're, you're separating the audios and then they're being fed in, you, like, you can, you can have more of that organic. So really, these become, like, platform and technology issues as well. There's, there's another side of that, and that's politeness. The actual people involved need to be aware of what the platform is, what the technological issues is, so that you can say, all right, you're talking, I'm waiting for that that pause, that beat, so that I could get an edge in. And there's a number of times where I get a word or a part of a word, and it's like, nope, you're still going. And I, I just, uh, I silence myself, <laughs> because it's like, I am aware of what's going on. And, and it, it even includes things like side conversations, you know, even if you're, I'm going to say a whisper over here to the guy next to me while the DM is talking to another player, like that can come across as a, you know, some kind of hiss. Yeah, but only in like a, only in a recorded game, right? right? Like if you guys are at your table, that doesn't really matter. And that's like part of knowing right. like the platform and no matter what platform you're using, right? You can't really do the side whisper, but I guess online you have to go, you have to chat, right? Mm -hmm. that, that You have to use that feature as opposed and that's how you would do it. So it, that is actually easier to get around than like what we do is when we record a game in the basement because you can just chat with each other. Right. Like in your basement is, is the null void zone. So we couldn't even like text each other <laughs> and, and use that as a we'll workaround if we wanted to. So the, the old days, you know, we'd pass notes. Yes. And, you know, now because our games are recorded, I as a DM don't feel comfortable passing a note because of that's information that I would want the camera to have and I can't do that so like I feel in that case I'm actually limited because the technology is there because we're recording this so it's like well how do I get this information across so like those those kind of things I wait until we're done and I can deliver them via Facebook Messenger or talk in person. It's like, this is what's going to happen or whatever have you. So I can't do like the, this is going to happen this session after we hit record. Another thing about the side conversation is I've actually waited for the DM and everybody else to be done, whatever was going on, to have a side conversation so it would be recorded and like would be known. Right. Because it was inter it was an RP interaction between two people, not just like talking about the pizza or whatever like that, <laughs> but like an actual RP event that I could normally say, oh, I'll just take care of this while other things are going on. I actually would wait until 
there's an appropriate time so that can be also shown to have happened. And and that's something that I think that was that was a smart choice because you want to capture those RP moments. You know, you want the table to see what's going on, especially in the case with our table that we have some younger players that I want them to see the the interaction. I want them to get bolstered by by that and learn. So yeah, by guessing conclusion, really the importance is you know first of all, streaming is here to stay. Like people are streaming games. Even people that there is plenty of people that have YouTube channels that I would say aren't YouTubers, but they're still playing their games and recording them, right? So in the the one sh the Facebook uh, RPG one or tabletop RPG one shot group, there is tons of that going on. Uh, also, absolute tabletop, which is fine. It, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. it you know, people, go, oh, well, you guys can see our game or whatever, and it's becoming a lot more mainstream. So, you know, so so I feel like the conversation has become so much more relevant. And some of the issues, like the platform difficulties that are people are doing, uh, even even if they're not recording their games or streaming them, they're still using you're still using that medium. So these things are going to come up. And as we game more and more online, which is going to happen, we're going to get more and more of that. And I recommend it, too. If you don't have a home group and you can't play in person, play online. You know, it's a ton of fun. And you, you still get the, the role-playing, the gaming experience. It's just slightly modified from the typical, I sit around a table, eat pizza, socialize with friends, and get gaming in at the same time. You know, I find that the streaming tends to be more streamlined if you will like the side chatter and and that kind of stuff gets relegated to a chat while the actual rp and the game stays in in the mainstay and you can get more gaming in less time now uh one last question i want to ask you guys is uh what do you think is the best stream you've seen so far like i mean setup kind of like everything look, look wise and also like um I guess, like, you know, what would you say is, like, the perfect style or setup so far? I don't think there is one, because there's literally, you know, tons of different ways of doing it. You know, you've got us recording in Ted's basement. Not the best. Uh, you, you've you got... Um, but it gives you that, like, homey feel. Like everybody <laughs> just sitting down at the table playing. It does, it does. You've got, you know, on the other end of the spectrum, Critical Role, where, it, you know, it's highly produced. Like, we were literally on their set... And they've got mics just hanging from the ceiling all over the place. And, you know, they've got a full set, you know. And then you've got things in between, like Maze Arcana, where it's set up so it looks like everyone's just playing together and near and right next to each other. But it isn't really like that. Just because they've done some clever things w with the cameras and the shots, uh -huh. right? And then you have, like, Save or Dice, where we're all playing remotely. And other, you know, other things in counter role play, they do a lot of that, that too, is where they're all playing remotely. So I, I really don't know that there's a best. There might just be a best for you. Uh, I, I actually really like the way Maze Arcana is set up. And, you know, I don't know whether I'm spoiling any kind of secrets, but if you actually look, like there's a table here, a table here, and the DM here. So you've got that central cluster that looks like a typical gaming environment but then the camera angles are on the outskirts facing towards those exact tables and it's highly highly produced not as much as critical role but whereas like we set up our cameras and our lights and we hit the button and it's just go like they actually stick have the mic in the ceiling <laughs> <laughs> stick the mic in the ceiling well you know they actually have a, a production crew they have people that you know come to you know Satine's place and make sure everything is completely set and done the way it's supposed to do there's a guy he comes for he comes for for setup and once everything is in its right place he says goodbye and he leaves you know whereas other people who are constantly managing they got somebody who sits there and manages the chat for the entire duration of their live stream so like there's all these different things that are done while that's actually happening, that we don't have the luxury to do. Mm. Well, and not only that, too, like, just because of the way they're able to stage things, when you actually watch it on um, on the, on Twitch or YouTube or wherever you're watching them at, it actually, like, pulls everything together. And, like, we look and go, oh, well, there's, like, 10 feet, 15 feet from the DM and this player. Well, it's, it's not like that when you're watching it on the stream. So it, it, it's done really well. But, like, it just goes back to, like I said, there's a, a bunch of different ways to do it. 
And but the most important kind of like thing is like, how are you guys doing it? Are you guys playing online? Are you are you recording your games? Are you streaming? Not streaming? Hate it? Love it? We'd love to know about it. And we got a place for it down in the comments below. While you're at it, like, share, and subscribe. You can check out the articles over at nerdarchy.com, or you can hang out with us over on Facebook. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.